And Rory, first of all, um, how do you view it as an advantage or otherwise um, missing out on the game last weekend? How do you view that going into this weekend's game against Exeter? Um, I suppose, in a way, it could be seen as an advantage. I think we were pretty much fully ready to go. The, the fact that it was called so late, there was definitely a low uh, among the squad probably the Friday and it takes away I suppose from the amount of work we put into that week. Um, but then again, the advantage would be that we didn't have to play 80 minutes and there's fresh bodies today going into training. So I, I, it's, it's about kind of getting ourselves back up and, and making sure we can stay match fit and the train the level of training today was pretty intense to be honest so being able to train at that level probably is a slight advantage i'd say but we also came on the back of a final six days before we were supposed to play so we've we have been short of big games i suppose is what i'm saying um, I assume you, you you saw leicester play um and, and their game at the weekend how do you expect um, them to challenge you maybe unlike other teams of. yeah I think they're they're very very clinical when they have the ball and they're very well organised they know what they, they want to do so it's a, for us I suppose trying to make them as uncomfortable as, as possible and not giving them cheap penalties where they can get field advantage and get into our 22 and build their mall game and their pick and go game and, and build that pressure that they love to squeeze teams with uh, as you saw on the weekend they really grind uh, like ground them down and we're able to claw back quite a big de uh, deficit after the first 10 minutes so for us it's it's not giving them any easy ball and playing in the right areas i suppose and putting pressure on them uh with our line speed and with our kicking and kick chase and making them try play out a bit more i suppose from their own half and discipline, as I said, is going to be so big because any penalties, cheap penalties you give them, they punish you. They put you in your own 22. They love a set piece. They're really, really clinical there. They obviously put a lot of work into it. And that's somewhere they get a lot of points. So for us, it's about yeah, really being really, really clean penalty-wise and forcing them to play in their own half. Are you, are you Rory? And yeah. just wondering... What time did you get the notification that the match was off? Um, and what did you do then in the afternoon? Did you do any sort of session or did you just go home and everyone to their own devices? Uh, it was around one o'clock, I think we got the, or maybe a bit earlier that we got a notification in our team app and that we just to go on a Zoom call in five minutes. So after that, I just went onto Twitter and typed in Toulon Leinster and saw obviously what the news was. And um, so we hopped on that call and uh, we came in for a gym session at three just to kind of, I suppose, do something with all the carb loading we'd done for a game that wasn't going to be played. So we just had a gym session uh, from three to four and then that was us for the weekend. Just sat back and watched everyone else play. That doesn't sound like fun, that gym session. Um, <laughs> can you just tell me a little bit about if you've noticed anything different with Robbie Henshaw, I know he's coming, there's a lot of praise coming his way and, and rightfully so, and everyone else can see a kind of a, a, a new level in this game, but can you tell me anything specifically different that you've noticed from being uh, so closely involved with him? Uh, yeah, I think both, he's kind of getting the ball in his hands more maybe uh, recently, whereas he had been used in the past probably as a setup to crash the ball up maybe and not given the license to, to use his feet and get the ball in space as much. And that's something definitely I definitely noticed over the Six Nations that he was carrying out in the wider channel a bit and backing himself one-on-one -on -one and getting over the gain line. Uh, and once you play one or two, once you start doing that, sorry, in one or two games, you get that confidence, which he's obviously feeling himself at the moment and continuing to do it and getting his hands on the ball more. And he's a real threat and attack, as you saw in the Monster game. Uh, his meters post contact were, were very big and then defensively he's just his collisions at the moment he stops people dead in their tracks and also has such a voice it's easy playing outside him because he gives you such confidence to go and put pressure uh, on the outside man and get high high line speed so 
uh, he's full of confidence at the moment. He's great to play with, and I think just on both sides of the ball in contact, he's winning every collision at the moment. So it's great. He's in serious, serious form. Thanks, Rory. Thanks. Hey, Rory. Uh, hey. You just sounded very well versed on Ace over there a moment ago when you were speaking about it. So I'm just wondering, like, how much of that comes down to analysis uh, among yourselves, or how much of it comes down to actually what, watching? Exeter, how much more rugby would you watch? And if you do watch them, do you look at things like kind of do you gain in terms of having to play them again someday and figure out how to try to beat them? Yeah, uh, like we would, a lot of our meetings, uh, Stuart would bring up clips from Pro 14, for, sorry, Top 14 games and Premiership games. And uh, Exeter and Saracens, when they were in the, in the Premiership, were two teams that we'd constantly kind of be watching and seeing what they're doing. And same with Toulouse in France, how they uh, kind of run outside the lines, especially as backs, we'd watch Toulouse, uh, how they run lines on, on the outer channels. But um, it is something we've seen with Exeter, how effective they are in opposition 22, be it with the tap and goes from five metres, how they build that and build their pick and goes and just grind teams down. Um, it's something that we uh, we wouldn't necessarily be looking too far ahead i suppose but when we see when we see these clips say a month or two ago it would be mentioned that we might come across these later in the season so it's a bit of both and then again on the weekend you saw how they look to build their game they like putting pressure on the opposition putting the ball in their half getting a set piece starter that they're clearly so well drilled at and just grinding down a team and putting the pressure on them and building the score that way. So um, it's a bit of both, I suppose, to answer your question. You mentioned Saris there, and it was a long time ago, I'm sure to some extent it's been put to bed, but I'm sure to another extent that that defeat last season is in the back of the mind somewhere. And while you don't get a chance to prevent that this season, is playing the champions away from the best uh, alternative or the best possible outcome in the sense that it could be them. Uh, I could kind of call what you're saying, um, but yeah, I I think the Saracens game is definitely. It was a, quite a long time ago, but it is it, it's the last knockout game we've played in Europe. So it, and it was such a disappointment, I suppose, for the group with the season we had to have our last game of the season be a performance and defeat like that. So uh, I suppose to get to play, as you said, the champions, the double champions, uh, it is probably the closest thing we can get. Or it's not a tougher task, I suppose, than what we played against Harrison. So uh, we're under no illusions of the performance we need. Like it's gonna, we didn't show up, I suppose, in the first 20 minutes of that Saracens game and gave them a lead that we couldn't get back. So it shows the, 80 minute performance that's needed at this level against such quality opposition to to win and it's going to be 80 minutes you saw even when Exeter went down by 17 points they slowly got that lead back and then just kicked on and won comfortably in the end so no matter what the score is after half time or after 20 minutes it's going to have to be 80 minutes and uh, I suppose as you said we've learned lessons from that Saris game that we'll hopefully be able to bring into this weekend. Thanks, Rory. Sorry for the end of Thanks, you're right. Uh, Rory, it's, it's uh, Don here. Just following up on, on Sinead's um, question, you know, you, you, you're at the cold place at the moment uh, in, in playing uh, games. Do you personally prefer uh, a break or do you like to go straight into another hard game and be on a roll? Uh, I think I personally prefer to go straight back into a game, I think. Um, yes. especially when you're kind of in a good vein of form and your body's feeling good and you've gone week after week playing games you do like to kind of continue that momentum and get through them so that was one of the disappointing things of, of last weekend and also for me personally to be able to get the opportunity to play in in knockout rugby in Europe in uh, the 13 position which I haven't gotten much opportunities to have it, it was quite disappointing so um, yeah, I would personally prefer to have gone week in, week out. Thanks, Roy. Thanks. Sorry, 
operator, and you just stand there and say, you haven't had a lot of experience with that. Now, I think that, you know, obviously, of course, find that you're being caught again, you're raining. Um, how do you kind of set yourself up for that? Is, is, it, uh, is it just uh, put in all the work and then just see how it goes on the day, or is there some, you know, sort of procedures you go through? Uh, well, no, it would be probably it'd be the same as most weeks, to be honest. Um, it's not too dissimilar to the prep we put in against Munster in the Pro 14 final two weeks ago. Um, like, we would obviously see the what's at stake is uh, massive this weekend and playing against Exeter, who are the champion team. They have something that we want, I suppose. Uh, everyone's kind of putting that extra bit of effort in. But in terms of my personal prep, it wouldn't change much from what it usually is coming into a European week. Okay, and, and um, if you get over uh, 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 Exeter, uh, more than likely be facing uh, one of the French sides. Uh, so I suppose looking down the line, um, uh, Leinster, the last remaining Irish team there, is that, uh, does that put a bit of pressure on? Um, yeah, I suppose a small bit. Uh, I think there's always pressure on us in Europe. Um, we've always kind of, since in the last few years I've been here, we've always put pressure on ourselves to perform in Europe and and to get another star on the jersey and and that's enough pressure in itself, I think, among the squad we have. So I also I don't think we can look too far ahead of this weekend with the quality of opposition we have. So. Um, being the last Irish team, I suppose, adds a small bit to it, but I think there's enough pressure on this game for us at the moment. Yeah. Good luck on Saturday. Thanks. Cheers. Thank you.